this is Tamara from mooglyblog.com, and in this video, I'm going to be demonstrating how to make the Autumn Amore Mitts. This is a free pattern that you'll find on mooglyblog.com at the link in the description. It's also the final pattern for the Autumn Amore Crochet Along happening in October 2018, again on mooglyblog.com. All of the patterns feature Red Heart Amore, as well as frills, K, and I hooks. And you can get all of these patterns, again, free at the link in the description, and there are video tutorials now for each one. They all feature this beautiful moss stitch, and today, like I said, we're going to be showing you how to create the mittens. This pattern comes in three sizes, child, as you can see right here is the smallest one, teen or adult small, and adult large. As a woman, I wear the adult small. My husband prefers the adult large. The child size would fit more likely uh, children approximately ages 3 to 10, although of course kids will come in all different sizes. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, the Autumn Amore mitts are all made from the bottom up, which means, means we start down here at the cuff and work our way up to the top with some decreases right there at the top of the mitten. Then the thumbs are added. Here again, you can see the child, teen, small adult, and large adult. I'm going to be demonstrating today the child size, the left-handed version. However, all the patterns are pretty much the same. It's just a matter of how many stitches around and how many rows before you break for the thumb. And the only difference between the right hand and the left-handed versions really is where we have a space for that thumb hole. So by demonstrating that child's left-hand version, hopefully you'll get the idea for each size, no matter what size you want to make. So let's go ahead and get started. Again, we're starting with the cuff portion and for that we'll be using our smaller hook the US eye hook which is a 5.5 millimeter now for round one of the autumn amore mitts you're going to start with a row of foundation double crochet that will then join to work in the round now again for each size you're going to have a different number of stitches for the child size I would want 18 foundation double crochets if you have not made foundation double crochets before I do have a separate tutorial for it on the Moogly Blog YouTube channel, so you can go to the link in the description where you'll find a link out to that tutorial as well as all the other unique stitches that I'll reference here today, and again, all those other fun patterns. So I'm just going to go ahead and make 18 foundation double crochets. Now you could, if you don't like foundation double crochets, simply work a row of 18 or again, however many you need for your size, uh, regular double crochets and then join those to work in the round. But regular double crochets worked into a chain aren't quite as stretchy as foundation double crochets, so I really do recommend that if you are able to, you take the time to learn the foundation double crochet, if you're not already familiar with it, uh, for making the cuff for this pattern. I think you'll really enjoy it anytime you make um, a top or a bottom up rather hat or anything like that where you want a really stretchy cuff or brim. It's just a really great technique. So again, check the written pattern for your size. See how many foundation double crochets you need to make in round one. I'm going to go ahead and make 18 here for the child size, and I will see you at the end of round one. Okay, so here I have my row of 18 foundation double crochets. You can see just how really stretchy that is. It makes a great cuff. So we're going to go ahead and join that to work in the round. So I want to make sure not to twist my row, but just to go ahead and slip stitch in the top of that first foundation double crochet we made. Pull that end out of the way here. Here we go. And then when I am all done making this mitten, I will use my yarn needle uh, and this beginning tail to cinch up and sew together the bottom of this here. Again, I do have a separate tutorial for this linked out at the tutorial and in the written pattern for joining up those foundation rows um, if you haven't done that before. So let's go ahead and move on to rounds two through four, which are all gonna be exactly the same. And again, this is for all of the patterns. We start with a chain one, and then we half double crochet in the next stitch. There we are. And then we foundation, or excuse me, front post double crochet around the next stitch. So um, again, if you haven't front post double crocheted before, I do have a separate tutorial for that, but you're basically going around the post of the stitch from front to back. So you see, you put the hook in from the front, around the post, comes out from the other side, then we yarn over and finish a double crochet just as normal. Then we move on to the next stitch and half double crochet in the next stitch. And then front post double crochet in the next. And that's our repeat. And that creates the stretchy ribbing that we'll have for the cuffs of our mittens. So just work a half double crochet around the next stitch, front post double crochet around the stitch after that, all the way around. And again, that will be for rounds two through four, all completely identical. So I will see you at the end of round four. 
Okay, so here I am at the end of round four, and you can see we've got our front post stitches worked around the previous front post stitches in the previous rounds, and half double crochets worked right in between. So to finish it off, all I need to do is slip stitch right into that first half double crochet made. Now at this point, I'm going to go ahead and pull up that loop and put down my I hook. It's time to switch over to the larger K hook. There we go. So I'll just slip that right into the active loop there and then continue with round five. So to begin round five, we start with a chain one and then we single crochet in the next stitch. And then we are going to, if you're following the written pattern, this is the part inside the brackets. We'll single crochet in the next stitch and work two single crochets in the stitch after that four times. So that was one repeat. And then we start the part in the brackets again, single crochet in the next stitch, two single crochets in the stitch after that. That's our second repeat. There we go. Then we do it again, single crochet in the next stitch, two single crochets in the next. That's our third repeat. And then we've got one more, single crochet in the next stitch, two single crochets in the stitch after that. And that's our fourth repeat for in between the brackets there. Then I am going to start again from the asterisk. We single crochet in the next stitch, and then we start our bracketed portion again. Single crochet in the next stitch, two single crochets in the stitch after that. That's our first repeat. Whoops, dropped my loop there. I need to pull up a little bit more yarn, getting too much tension. There we go. All right, so let's begin our second repeat there between the brackets. Single crochet in the next stitch, two single crochets in the next. And again, for this round, you'll want to check your written pattern. It may be slightly different depending on which size you are making. But this is the basic idea. We're going to be doing some increases in this round. Single crochet in the next, two single crochet there in the last, so that we will have a larger number of stitches. Again, check the written pattern for your size. At the end of round five here, for the child size, you should have a total of 26 stitches. Now I'm going to go ahead and join to that first single crochet I made in this round, but this is where I'm going to change colors. I'm going to go ahead and change to my next color, just the way I've been doing these with A, B, and C, I would be switching over to my color C here. If you're doing your own color pattern for these, um, your own, own color choices, like I say, I've got it written out in the written pattern exactly which colors you want to use at which point, but you can absolutely mix those up, change it up, do them however you like. So whichever color you want to use next for your mitten. I'm going to go ahead and leave some yarn there at the end so I can weave that end in. And then I'm going to yarn over with the new color. And let me get this string out of the way. I'm going to actually push this behind my hook first. Get that back on the hook here. I'm going to pull this through and make the slip stitch join with my new color, like so. So I'll go ahead and drop the little tail end there so I continue with the working end. And then I'm ready to begin round six. For round six, I am going to chain one, single crochet right in that first stitch we joined to, and it's okay to work over your end here for a couple stitches just to help tack it down. There we go. Then I am going to chain one, skip the next stitch, and single crochet in the stitch after that. And that is our repeat for this round. Then I chain one again, skip the next stitch, single crochet in the stitch after that. So chain one, skip one, single crochet in the next stitch. If you're familiar with the moss stitch, also known as the linen stitch or the granite stitch, then this is the part you're very familiar with. Single crochet, chain one, skip one. Single crochet, chain one, skip one. And we're going to continue that all the way around. Of course, at the end, we will chain one and skip the last stitch and join to the first one made for this round. So I'm going to make just a few more here. We're almost all the way around. For round six here, you should have 13 single crochets if you're making the child size. Again, if you're making the larger sizes, please check the written instructions for those numbers. So here I am at the end of round six. I've got my final chain one. I'm going to skip that last stitch and join to the first stitch I made of this round. However, again, I want to switch colors here. So at this point, I'm going to pull up my next color. Color A is what I've designated it in this pattern, but again, whichever color you want to use next in your pattern, in your color scheme. There we are. All right, there we go. So again, I'm just going to yarn over with the new color and pull that through that first stitch in that last loop to make the slip stitch. Then I like to give those that previous color just a good tug so that the slip stitch doesn't get too big. 
and just leave it hanging. Now I'm going to leave, you'll notice here, I've left the other two colors just hanging. I haven't cut them at all because I'm going to pull them up within the mitt as I keep crocheting uh, so I don't have a whole bunch of ends to weave in. We want to minimize the ends we have in our project. So with that, we're ready to begin round seven. Round seven, I start with a chain two like so, and then I'm going to skip over that first stitch, the one we joined to, and work a single crochet right in that chain one space. And then I'm ready to continue my repeat. I chain one, skip the next stitch, single crochet in the next chain one space. Chain one, skip the next stitch, single crochet in the next chain one space. Chain one, skip the next, single crochet in the next chain one space. So I wanna go right into the space, not the chain itself. Just go right under the whole chain stitch. That makes this a very quick pattern to work. As you can see, I'm all the way around almost here, almost, well about halfway. It's pretty darn quick though. And again, for round seven, you should have 13 single crochets and of course 13 chain ones in between if you're making the child size. So now I'm almost all the way around. And since this one started with the chain two, we're gonna finish our repeat for this one with a single crochet like so, right there in that very last chain space. Then I'm going to join this one. After making that final single crochet, I'm not going to chain again. I'm going to join to that chain two space that we started the row with. Then I'm ready to drop that color and find my next one in pattern here. So that's gonna be the one I started with here. There we go. You can see I'm just pulling it right up along the inside of the mitt. You don't wanna to pull too tight and cause your mitt to pucker and you don't want it to be too loose because then your stitches end up floppy. So I like to just give it a little wiggle with my hook and my tension finger there so that I get a nice even amount of tension in there. So then we're ready to begin round eight. For round eight, I'm going to chain one, single crochet back in that chain two space, which really we're treating like a chain one space. And then it's our repeat around. Chain one, single crochet in the next chain one space. Chain one, skip the next stitch. Single crochet in the next chain one space, chain one, skip the next stitch, all the way around again. So hopefully you'll be able to see how rows seven, or excuse me, rounds seven and eight work together. For round seven, you start with a chain two and create that chain space that you work into right up front. For round eight, you start with a single crochet and finish off with a chain space right before you join. So that way you can get the offset moss, the moss stitch stitches, the single crochets offset the way they need to be, but by having two different starts and endings though to those rounds, we keep a really straight seam that will go up right the inside of our mitts, and that will help us when it's time to make our thumb hole. So I'm gonna continue working my way around here for round eight. All right, let's see here. And for this one, I want to end, oops, that's my join. And this is why it's important to count your stitches, folks. It's really easy to end up working in that join. So always make sure to count your stitches. There we go, I'll pull that slip stitch up a little closer because I know that this round's going to end with a chain one and then joining to that first stitch made. And then of course, at that point, I'll be switching to the next color and pattern, which for me is that white one again. There we go. And then I just continue. We're just going to continue repeating rounds seven and eight. And however many times you're going to repeat those rounds, again, depends on the size you're making. For the child size version, we repeat those 17 times before we move on to the thumb hole. So I'm going to add a couple more rounds here, just following round seven and eight pattern, and then we'll move on to round 16, which is for the child size, the thumb hole. Um, it's a different round for the other sizes. Again, check the written pattern for your size, and then we'll go ahead and make that thumb hole round together. Okay, so for the sake of time, I'm going to pretend I've made the first 15 rounds of this mitt. If I pull up the actual child size mitt here, you can see that would take us right up through this round right here. Up next is round 16, where we're going to split right here and make the thumb hole that we'll work into later when we create the actual thumb. So let's pretend we're on round 16 of the pattern. Again, this is just for the child size. For the other pattern, the other sizes, this round will be slightly different, but the basic idea is definitely the same. I'm going to go ahead and yarn over with the next color in my pattern to join the previous round there. And then for round 16, for the child size, we're going to start with a chain one, then we're going to single crochet right in that first chain space. Then I am going to chain one 
and skip the next three single crochets. Now, again, for the other sizes, you'll skip a different number of single crochets here, and you might chain a different number here. Again, for the child size, you chain one. For the larger sizes, you're gonna chain a couple more, but we're just going to count then the number, according to the written pattern, of single crochets that you skip. So one, two, three. Then we're gonna to come to the next chain one space and make our next single crochet. Then we repeat around the way we have been doing. Chain one, skip the next single crochet, single crochet in the next. Chain one, skip the next one, single crochet. All the way around until we get to that very first single crochet we made. Now, how is the, uh, that's the left-handed version. The right-handed version is just a little different. Uh, basically, we put that hole at the end of the round, the hole that we made by skipping over those single crochets. We'll work into those stitches later to make our thumb hole but this will give us the narrower finger portion of our mitten as we work on up the rest of the way. So you'll lose a couple stitches there, uh, depending on how many stitches you skipped, of course, your stitch count will be different. Uh, for the child size, we now have 11 single crochets in that first round. So you can see I'm all the way around here. I've got that last stitch, so I'm gonna chain one and then just join right to that first single crochet I made. And of course here, I want to pull up my next color and pattern. You can see there where we skipped those stitches, that's going to be our thumb hole. Of course, this one's pretty small, but it's for the child size. So I'll just find my next color in pattern here to finish off round 16. And then really after that, it's back to our written pattern. And of course, if you are making the larger sizes and you've got more chains in between here, we basically just treat these chains the same way we treated stitches in the previous rounds, or maybe when we made that first round of moss stitch. So if there's a chain there and it would be time to work into a stitch, you work into it. So to make round 17 of the child size, let's go ahead and make it together. We're gonna to start with a chain two, and then we're going to skip that first stitch. Then we've got a chain one there. We're going to single crochet right into that chain one space. Now, if you prefer, you could work into the actual chain, and that can make this one a little easier. So when you're working to these chains here as if they were stitches, for just for the thumb hole portion, I would recommend going into the actual chain for that single crochet or that pair of single crochets again, depending on what size you're making. So after you've single crocheted in there, then we chain one, we're gonna skip the next stitch or the next chain if that's what your size calls for. And then we continue basically on around. Single crochet in the chain one space, chain one, skip the next stitch all the way around. And then again, round 18 will be the same basically as round eight, where we start with chain one and single crochet in the first, and just work our way up, continuing right along in that moss stitch, just like here. So here we've worked our way up, we created that thumb hole, and now we're just working even again until it's time to decrease. So you'll wanna repeat um, this number of moss stitch rounds, again, depends on what size you're making. For the child size, I would keep repeating this until I had a total of 27 rounds made. And in this case, these last few rounds here, rounds 17 through 27, will all each have 11 single crochets. Again, you'll have more for the bigger sizes. So I'm going to add just a couple more rounds here, and then we'll go ahead and go over how to decrease for the top of the mitt together. Okay, so again, for the sake of time, I'm going to pretend that I've done all the rounds necessary to get up to the top where I'm ready to begin my decreases and finish off my mitten. Now, again, this will be slightly different depending on your size, but again, the, set, the basic idea and format of this closing up the top of the mitten here is the same no matter what size you're making. So when you get to the rounds after your repeats and you're ready to begin decreasing, for the child size, it'll be round 28, and you wanna just yarn over and finish, of course, that previous round with whatever the next color is in your stitch pattern. And then we'll begin round 28 for the child size here together. I'll put this one out of the way a little bit. All right, start with a chain one. Then we're going to single crochet in that first chain space right there. Then we chain one, skip the next single crochet, and we're going to single crochet in each of the next two chain spaces. So that will begin our repeat. So to begin our repeat, again, with the asterisk, if you're following the written pattern, we single crochet in the next two chain spaces. So there's one, two, then we chain one, skip the next stitch, and do that again. Single crochet the next two, one, two. So we're eliminating some of our chain spaces in this round. Chain one, skip the next stitch, single crochet in the next two chain spaces, one, two. Pull up a little bit more yarn here, and it's fine too. Um, 
I have been making just a little short one here, but definitely take the time to untangle your yarn and pull out the one you're using each time. Uh, it will prevent tangles down the road. Okay, then I think we have our repeat one more time here. So we chain one, skip the next stitch, single crochet in the next two chain spaces there. And that's our repeat all the way around until we get to where there is just one chain space left, which is the one right here. So with one chain space left and one single crochet remaining, we are going to, let's see, make sure we chain one, skip that last stitch, single crochet in that last chain space, chain one, and then join. So at the end of round 28, you should have 11 single crochets total. Let's go ahead and work through that uh, straight through one more time here, just kind of pointing them out. We start with a chain one, a single crochet in that first chain space, then we chain one again, single crochet in the next two chain spaces, chain one, single crochet in the next two chain spaces, chain one, single crochet in the next two chain spaces, chain one, single crochet in the next two chain spaces, chain one, single crochet in the last chain space, and then chain one and join. So again, that should be 11 single crochets in that round. Now when we join, of course, we're going to switch to our next color, whatever that one is in your color pattern. So let me pull that one up here and make my slip stitch with that color. And again, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and untangle that yarn just a little bit right here at the end of the mittens. It can get a little crazy and it can help too. As soon as you're done with each color, if you want to go ahead and cut it, if you know you're done with that color, you're not coming back to it, go ahead and cut it. Leave a good, good length just in case you miss, missed a stitch and need to go back and add it or something. Um, and of course you want enough to weave in at the end, but otherwise you can go ahead and cut them as you're done. Okay, so with your yarn all untangled, you're ready to begin round 29. We're going to start with a chain of two, one, two. Then we're going to skip the first single crochet, single crochet in the next chain space. And then we're going to chain one, skip the next two single crochets, single crochet in the next chain space chain one, skip the next two, single crochet in the next chain space, chain one, skip the next two, single crochet in the next chain space, repeating all the way around until one single crochet remains. So we gotta keep an eye out for that. Looks like there's three left, so we know we single crochet in that chain one space. And then we can chain one, skip that last stitch there, right at the beginning, and slip stitch, or excuse me, we need to single crochet in that last chain one space. There we go. And then we can slip stitch to that beginning chain two. So at the end of round 29, you should have six single crochets and we can go through that one again together as well. Cause this one does get a little tricky. And again, each row of these decreases is going to be a little different depending on the size, but the basic idea is the same. So this is round 30 for the, or excuse me, round 29 for the child size. We start with a chain two, skip the first stitch, single crochet in the next chain one space, then chain one, skip two stitches, single crochet in the chain space, chain one, skip two, single crochet in the chain space, chain one, skip two, single crochet in the chain space, chain one, skip two, single crochet in the chain space, chain one, skip the last stitch, single crochet in the last chain space, and then we can join to the top, or to the, our chain two rather, that we began our round with. There we go. And of course, I'm going to do that with my next color. And again, if you're making the child size, this is round 30, and this will be our final round of the pattern. Um, if you're making the other sizes, again, you'll need to check the written instructions for those. So let's go ahead and finish off this child size mitt together, or at least the top of it, and then we can make the thumb. So I'm going to start with a chain one, then I'm going to single crochet in each chain space around, and that's it. So no chaining in this one. One, find the next chain space, two, find the next chain space, three, find the next chain space, four, find the next chain space, five, find the next chain space, and that is six. There we go, and that is all our stitches for this round. So at this point, we're ready to find some scissors and a yarn needle and cut our yarn and gather up that very last round, and then we can come back and add our thumb. Okay, so to finish it off, I'm going to go ahead and cut all my yarns. Again, I want to leave a nice long tail of each so that I can weave in those ends. Then I can go ahead and pull up 
that last stitch. Now I said to do a slip stitch join and that is the typical way to do it, but to be honest, when I'm gathering up these, I like to do it just a little bit differently. The first thing I'm going to do is pull those other two ends to the inside of the mitten. I don't need those on the outside anymore and we don't want them trapped out there. We want to be able to weave those in on the inside of our mitten. They get in there guys, there we go. All right, now we've got that last round we just finished there at the top of our mitten. So what I'm going to do is I've put the end of my yarn on my yarn needle and I'm going to find each stitch around and I'm just going to go from the outside to the in through each one of those final stitches of the round. So that's two, three, four, five, and six. And I know there were six stitches, so I've gone through each one with my yarn needle. Then I can just take that and pull it nice and tight. Get my hand inside the mitten so it's a little easier to see here. And just give it a good tug and it helps to actually hold that part you're closing up with your finger and thumb to just stabilize it a little bit. And you can see that's gathered right up the top of our mitten. So I just take my needle at this point, send it right down back into the middle of the mitten on the inside there. Whoops. I want to make sure not to accidentally catch any more stitches. I just want to come to the inside there. And then from there, I can weave in my ends. So that is it for the body of the mitten. Like I said, at this point, I would go ahead maybe now or when I'm weaving in all my ends at the end, take that final or that first tail that we had at the very, very beginning before we started our foundation double crochets. And like I say, just go ahead and put that on your yarn needle and send it through that other end there. And again, through that side, and then you can weave that end in and you'll finish off your cuff very nicely. And like I said, weaving in ends for this is pretty much like weaving ends for anything else. But we still have this little tiny thumb hole here that needs a thumb. So let's go ahead and pick back up our K hook and whatever color you want to use for your thumb. I'm going to use the B, which is the same color I used for my cuff. So at this point, what we want to do is join to the single crochet at the side of the thumb opening. So let's take a look at our mitten here. Now this is a left mitten. If it were a right mitten, I'd want to join to this side. Let me see if we can visualize this here. If I join to this side of the opening for a right mitten, and this is for it because I'm right-handed. If you're left-handed, this is gonna be the opposite. If I join to this side, you can see it puts the seam for the thumb on the inside of the hand. If I join to this size for the left-hand mitten, which is the one I've been making here, then the seam would be on the inside of the hand this way. So this is just a little tip, depending on which side you want to add it to for the thumb, so that you get your seam for your thumb on the inside of the hand so it doesn't show from the outside. So again, find, this is the left-hand one, so I'm going to take this one. Um, again, if you're left-handed, these will be flipped. But I'm just going to go ahead and put my hook right in that, the side of that single crochet, right at the side of my thumb opening there. And then I'll yarn over with my new my yarn for the thumb. Oops, there we are. And pull that up. And then I'm just going to go ahead and make a chain one to secure that down. Drop that. Tail wants to be in the way there. There we go. Chain one, pull. And there we go. All right, now I am going to go ahead and make a double crochet right in that single crochet. Like so, there we are. And if you prefer, you can do a uh, standing double crochet there rather than joining and doing a chain one, it's up to you. If you're familiar with that stitch, however it is, you wanna get a single, or excuse me, a double crochet worked into the side of that single crochet. Then we are going to work a single crochet in each stitch and chain space across the bottom of our thumb. If we had joined on this other side, we work across the top of the thumb first. So let me get that tail out of the way here. This is the next stitch at the bottom of our thumb. So I'll work a single crochet there. Then I'll have a single crochet in the chain one space, single crochet in the next stitch, and single crochet in the next chain one space. And you'll have a couple more of those for the bigger sizes, but for the smaller size here, here we are at that last skipped single crochet. So I'll work a single crochet in there. And then pull that tail out of the way again. If you wanted to, you can take your time here to go ahead and grab that tail and pull it to the inside of the mitten. There we are. So now it'll stay out of our way. So now we're at the other side of our thumb hole. 
So I'm going to work another double crochet into the side of that stitch. And then we're ready to work across the top of the thumb hole. Now for this one, you'll remember we just had a chain one, so there's only one stitch here to work into. For the larger sizes, you'll have uh, a greater number of stitches, I believe it's three and five, that you'll need to work into each one of those, uh, the stitches and the chain spaces. Since we've just got the one chain here, I'm just going to go ahead and work right into the bottom of that chain. That's why I recommended working into the chain rather than the chain space. I'll make my single crochet there. And that brings us right around to the other side again. So that should give us a total of eight stitches all the way around for the child size. Again, for the other sizes, you'll have more. Then we can simply join to that top of that first double crochet we made with a slip stitch. We're not going to change colors at all for the thumb. Way too small and fiddly. I mean, you can if you want, but I chose not to, um, just because it's a lot easier to keep going with the same size here because we are making these tiny little thumbs. Now from here, we're just going to work it even chain one and single crochet in each stitch around. And again, however many stitches, however many rows for the different lengths of the thumb, you need to refer to the written pattern for your size. Pull up just a little bit more yarn here, but basically we're just going to keep working evenly around until we have the thumb length we desire. Then we'll be ready to do a little bit of decreasing and finish off our thumb. So let me just add another row or so, and then I will work through that decrease with you together. Okay, so once you've worked the number of rows evenly for your size, then it's time to start decreasing. And again, this is going to be just a little bit different for each size, but the basic idea is the same. We're going to be working some single crochet twos together until we've got a tiny little bit that we can cut the yarn and gather up just like we did at the top of our mitten. So let's go ahead and make what would be round seven of the thumb together. We're gonna start with a chain one, and again, this is just for the child size. Then we're going to single crochet two together four times. Remember we had eight stitches in the previous round, so this is going to take us down to four. We're going to go into the first stitch there, pull up a loop, go into the next stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, and pull through all three. That's our first single crochet two together. I'm going to do that three more times. So pull up a loop, pull up a loop, yarn over, and pull through all three. That's two. Pull up a loop, next stitch, pull up a loop, that's three. We should just have two stitches left here. Do the first one, do the second one, whoops, yarn over, pull through together, and that finishes it off. And then we've just had four stitches there at the end of this final round of our thumb. So I'm going to go ahead and cut my yarn again. And then I can pull that yarn up and get it on my yarn needle. And then I will just finish this up exactly the same way I finished up the top of the mitten. It helps to kind of get your hand in there, or finger in this case. There we are. This is coming out of our last stitch, so we find the first of our four stitches, go from the outside to the in. With our yarn needle, there's one, two, three, and spin it a little bit here. That one is four. All right, so we just give it a little tug. Helps to sort of stabilize it with your fingers there. You can see it closes it up quite nicely. And then again, we can just send that yarn needle carefully to the inside of our mitten to weave in our end. And there you have it. A teeny tiny little Autumn Amore mitten. Okay, and that concludes the Autumn Amore crochet along on Moogly, except if you're watching this in 2018, there is still one giveaway that's going right to the end of the month. So you'll wanna check that out. I believe it ends October 29th. Again, you can get the written pattern as well as the right and left-handed tutorials and all the supplies you need, the yarn, the hooks, everything at the link in the description. And there are also matching beanie and scarf and cowl patterns. So I'll go ahead and put on my adult small teen size mitt here. You can see this is where our seam was worked up on the inside. We've got our thumb hole there and we've just got a nice cozy mitt. If you wanted to, you could absolutely add more rows to the cuff if you like a longer cuff. Um, you can adjust this if you've got particularly long fingers. If you've got one of those families with real long fingers, you can add a couple more rows. If you tend to have shorter fingers, you can eliminate a couple. It's a really easy pattern to adjust to your own personal taste. So I hope you'll give it a try, as well as all the other patterns in this series and Red Heart Amore. It's super soft. I wish we had feel a vision through YouTube here. It would be so great for you guys to be able to feel it, but definitely go check it out 
out in the store or order some on redheart.com. Again, at the link in the description, I've got all that info. And this is one you definitely want to check out. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the mittens and the crochet along as a whole. Uh, if you did, please give us a like. Let us know what you think in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe to the Moogly YouTube channel. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you.